I had a chance to play with this thing, set up as my main mesh system, and no issues, no drops, nothing like that. Super smooth sailing. We'll go over the map, the map, <laughs> the app in a little bit. And did uh, you know all the speed test, range tests? I have the numbers right here. And again, I tested with the following Wi-Fi 7 devices. So let's just jump straight in with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second to upload and download. And the router itself actually happens to support up to 10 gig speeds. And while I'm on a Wi-Fi device, if I actually speed test on the router, I can actually get, you know, not obviously not to the 10 gig speeds or not even to the five gig speeds, but I do get a lot better numbers because of the 10 gig port. However, if I do an internet speed test on the satellites, I'm pretty much capped at the 2.5 gigabit speeds because it goes in at 10 and it comes out at 2.5. So as soon as it comes out at 2.5, I'm actually capping everything after that to 2.5. Even my ethernet connected devices, when I do a speed test, I'm actually at 2.5 again because it goes in at 10. Well, my internet basically goes in at five. This thing supports up to 10. And then as soon as it comes out, it comes out at 2.5. So it automatically caps me to 2.5. However, again, with the Wi-Fi 7 devices on the main router, it's still unlocked to my full 5 gigs. That's why you guys see me getting better speeds on Wi-Fi versus getting it on Ethernet. Now, to find the true performance of this mesh system, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to the computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. Now, looking at these results, the single router configuration, again, it drops because of the 2.5 gigabit port. And as a result, I actually get just under 2.5 gigabit speed. So, I mean, it is doing very, very well um, up to those speeds, I should say. And then the wired backhaul is pretty much the same thing because all the other ports are 2.5 gigabit speeds anyways. And the most impressive part about this router is its wireless backhaul speeds. Now, with the Wi-Fi 7 device, I actually got above 2 gigabits both on the download and on the upload, which is very, very impressive. And that's really the main focus of this mesh system is that wireless backhaul speeds really drastically increase, especially with this thing. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, sometimes people ask, should I get a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system if I don't have too many Wi-Fi 7 devices or if I don't have any Wi-Fi 7 devices? And the answer is it depends. But if you're looking at, if you want really good wireless backhaul speeds, meaning at the satellites, you get some really good numbers, you want to get something like this. And the Orbi 870 honestly has fantastic wireless backhaul speeds. Very, very impressed. I was actually not expecting it to be that fast on Wi-Fi. Um, uh, for an Ethernet connected device, I would expect it, but on Wi-Fi, which I, again, I go over that in the other video in the wireless backhaul mode, and that's kind of a separate topic in and of itself, kind of. Anyways, so now we get to range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. Essentially, the more obstructions there are, typically the less range you're going to get. So, you know, if you're in between walls, thick walls, between floors, things like that, all of that stuff can negatively impact your range. Now, in my case, at 20 feet away, this thing is essentially <laughs> just about dropless. <laughs> um, so essentially, there was no drop at those speeds, and that's because this thing is incredibly fast. Now, the speed rating on this thing is so fast <laughs> that really the limitation is the 2.5 gigabit port. Because if you raise that limitation, I think this thing can actually go faster. Now at 50 feet, this was very impressive because I'm literally outside my place and I got almost the same download speeds. So practically getting the same download speeds, I tested it several times and I kept getting that consistently. The upload speed did take quite a big hit, but still very, very fast overall. But really the download speed is king here. And at 100 feet away, this is when I'm across the street, still getting some very solid numbers, especially in the download section. Obviously the upload section is not doing as well, but in the download section, it is doing very, very well. So for setup and configuration, use the Orbi app, and it's a very simplified app. It pretty much walks you through the process and they've kind of updated the user interface for that. Um, recently and um, it's a very nice clean interface it works it's very simple you pick a Wi-Fi name and password once you're all done with all that stuff you're good to go now the thing that is worth mentioning is 
The way Netgear kind of does it is Orbi, the app itself, when you look at it, you're like, oh, there's, you know, this thing's pretty limited. Again, it's made to be simple, but you can access their web browser interface and that gives you a lot more options. Now, let's focus on the app just real quick. So on the app, you pretty much pick your Wi-Fi name. You could pick a guest Wi-Fi. There's a hidden Internet of Things Wi-Fi that you could eventually get to that. Um, but pretty much it's just like you could do a speed test and then you could do like a firmware update and uh, check for firmware updates and do a firmware update and you know check the traffic and then you can also do parental controls now parental controls on this thing are very very basic if you want more advanced parental controls it does require a separate subscription i i, I do believe they give a 30-day free trial or something like that um, but that would require a subscription if you want something outside of pause and unpause uh, and then it also comes with Netgear Armor, which offers additional protections um, for a 30-day free trial. And then after that, if you want to continue using it, that also would require a separate subscription. Um, again, completely optional. Now, when you go to the browser interface, that which is orbilogin.net, I believe, there's a lot more options you could tinker with. When I was doing local speed tests, it wasn't going as fast. The IP address that DHCP sets on this thing is 10.168.168. You know, the rest of the numbers that was a little odd to me because normally it's 192.168. I know it doesn't have to be 192.168, but usually it starts with 192.168. Once I changed my DHCP to 192.168.1 you know, the rest of the numbers within the same subnet, the speed test started flying. And that's the numbers that I'm telling you guys right here. Cause I, after I changed that options, everything essentially started flying. You could set up VPN if you want to, you could save your settings and then reload them. Obviously you could do firmware updates. There are essentially, you can even do a VLAN on this thing as well. All right. So is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. I would say this thing is phenomenal for speeds up to 2.5 gigabits and i want to say I, i'm trying to think i i, I want to be as accurate as possible but i'm trying to think this might i would actually need to look at the stats and everything but this might be the best mesh system for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds now not to confuse it with the orbi 970 is actually better than this but for that, because as the two 10 gig ports on the router and then the satellites have 10 gigs each for the Orbi 970, I would recommend that for up to 10 gig speed. So that's actually a better mesh system than this, hands down. Um, but for something that's up to 2.5 gigabit speeds that I can wholeheartedly recommend, this might actually be the best. If it's not the best, it's definitely up there. Um, but based on its wireless backhaul and its range test, it did obviously the wired backhaul did as well too but the main focus is when when i see a router when i see a mesh system that does very well for wireless backhaul and very well for range that this definitely falls in that category and it is absolutely a phenomenal mesh system and i will also be comparing this to the orbi 970 on the orbi 770 in a separate video so if you guys haven't already smash that subscribe button if you guys enjoyed this video like the video share the video and let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below are you guys planning on getting this do you already have it do you like it do you not like it and uh yeah just genuinely curious thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one